Hey all, my name is Taylor, and I have in front of me the 2010 27-inch Apple Cinema Display. Well, it's right in front of me. You guys can't see it, but I have it right here. And I want to talk about if this monitor is worth purchasing in 2022. This monitor is 11 years old, and you can find these between $150 and $300 on the used market. $300 for one in better condition. And that sounds like a lot of money for an 11 year old display. Alternatively, there's the Apple Pro Display XDR, which retails for $6,000, including the stand. So between $6,000 and $300, there's a big difference there. But what are you getting for that $300? Is an 11 year old Apple monitor even worth using today in 2022? Well. I think it is, and I want to talk to you about why I believe that's the case. So let's take a look at this Apple Cinema Display from 2010. First, let's talk about this Apple Cinema Display and look at the features that it offers. The 27-inch Apple Cinema Display was released in 2010, and it lasted exactly one year before it was replaced with the Apple Thunderbolt Display. The only difference between the Apple Cinema Display and the Apple Thunderbolt Display was the connector the Apple Cinema Display used a mini display port while the Apple Thunderbolt Display used a Thunderbolt 1 connector. The Apple Cinema Display that I have here features a 1440p IPS display that is 27 inches diagonally, panel to panel. It has built-in stereo speaker system with a webcam and a microphone at the top. At the back there is three USB-A ports and two cables coming out of the back. One is going to be for power, and the other is the display connectors, which are comprised of a MagSafe, a USB-A, and a mini display port connection. The Apple Cinema Display has built-in stand that tilts up and down effortlessly, but it doesn't pivot, nor does it have any height adjustment features. So if you want to adjust the height, you'll have to find a book or get a third-party riser. Let's take a look at this display's connectors and see how you would connect this to your machine. Depending on your computer, you'll probably need an adapter of some sort because this monitor uses a mini display port connector, which isn't found on most modern computers. Most Macs during the 2010s had mini display port or Thunderbolt, which could be used to connect this display. However, the 2016 and later versions of Macs started phasing out the mini display port and Thunderbolt 1 for USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4. So to connect this display to devices from 2016 and later, you're going to need a mini display port to USB 3 or 4 adapter. I have one here and that's what I use to connect my Apple Cinema display to my MacBook Pros. To connect to a Windows machine, you'll probably need a mini display port to display port adapter which I use to connect this display to my RTX 2080. Conveniently, the 2080 does have a USB-C port, so you could connect to it using that with the USB-C connector. Now there's also a USB-A connector on the display, which plays a big role in how this monitor works. This monitor doesn't feature any physical buttons like 99% of other monitors do. Apple can't have ugly buttons messing up their beautiful clean lines of the Apple Cinema Display, so they just said screw it, we don't need them. So instead, all the brightness and volume functions of this monitor are controlled inside Mac OS via this USB-A connector. So having that connected to your Mac is very essential for the basic operations such as controlling brightness and volume on this display. The USB-A connector is also responsible for providing power to those three USB-A ports that are located in the back of the display. The last connector is a MagSafe cable that pairs seamlessly with any pre-2016 MagSafe connection and serves to keep your laptop charged up without needing to plug in separately to the wall. This was a very cool idea back in 2010. In fact, the original box for this display features a pre-Retina MacBook Pro connected to this display, so they were really marketing this as an essential tool for your 2010 MacBook Pro. Now that we know a bit about this monitor, how does it work with modern hardware? This display works near flawlessly on my 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro that I use for work, which is running Big Sur. Just connect the USB-C, and then the USB-A, and everything works how it should. 
Unfortunately, that same experience can't be had for the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is running macOS Monterey. When connecting via USB-C, the display powers right up. So then I connected the USB-A to get access to the brightness and volume controls, and I noticed that the sliders for both were locked at the maximum values. I couldn't adjust them at all, no matter how hard I tried, they were very locked. I thought this might be an issue with the adapters, so I tried various other USB-C adapters and USB-A adapters, and none seemed to work. Finally, I did some digging on Apple Forms, and I managed to find some other Apple Cinema Display owners who were experiencing the same issue, and they were recommending a software called Monitor Control, which apparently allows you to get control over brightness and volume again. I tried it out, and it worked. Kind of. Now, I had an issue of the max brightness and the max volume being effectively halved. After more digging, I found a GitHub issue where someone found a setting in the advanced options of monitor control that overrides the max values that are set and was kind enough to provide values that seemed to work for their Apple Cinema display and it worked flawlessly in my case as well. Those values for max brightness and volume did come out to be 255. That seems to be the sweet spot for the setting for the Apple Cinema display on 16 inch and probably 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro is running macOS Monterey. So finally got that working perfectly on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I didn't even need to connect the USB-A surprisingly after that. Everything works via the USB-C adapter and I suspect that the weirdness that I experienced with this is a symptom of macOS Monterey. So we'll have to see if future operating system updates will resolve this issue and make the Apple Cinema Display easier to use on the new uh, 16 and 14 inch M1 MacBook Pros. Okay, so that's macOS. What if you want to use the Apple Cinema Display on Windows? Well, you are in for a treat because the Apple Cinema Display actually works really well in Windows 11. I can connect the monitor using the same mini display ports USB adapter directly into my RTX 2080, which conveniently has a USB-C port and the USB-A connector directly into my motherboard, and it all works really great. If your graphics card doesn't have a USB-C connection, you can always use the mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort adapter. The volume is easily controlled, and there is no glitches or visual artifacts when running Windows 11. The only thing that doesn't seem to work really well, and that's just because there is a complete lack of this, is the brightness control. There doesn't seem to be any control over the brightness for the Apple Center display in Windows 11. I was digging around in the settings and I couldn't find any setting for it, so you will be stuck at the max brightness on that, which is fine. I think the brightness is set perfectly for this, so there's no issue there for me. So I've talked about how this monitor connects to various machines, but what is the experience like? What is it like to use this monitor daily? Does this thing just absolutely suck compared to modern monitors? Well. In terms of refresh rate and latency, yeah, it sucks because it's pretty slow. But in terms of picture quality and visual fidelity, oh man, this thing is surprisingly good. It really competes with some of the best 1440p IPS monitors on the market today. And that is just insane. So in terms of picture quality, this monitor is still so surprisingly good and it stands with some of the best looking IPS displays at 1440p that are on the market today in 2022. The screen has a glossy finish, which really makes the colors on this monitor pop. It has a surprisingly low peak brightness of 375 nits, but despite that, this monitor appears to be very bright. The whites get plenty bright and the blacks get pretty dark. This is an 11 year old IPS display, so it does have some noticeable backlight bleed, but I'd say this has about the same backlight bleed, if not a little bit less than my Alienware monitor that was made in 2021. Despite this though, casual gaming on this monitor, a really nice experience. And this can even be used for light professional work like photo editing, video editing, and even coding. This thing has speakers that are still really nice and punchy. They have a very similar sound to the 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro, 
with maybe just a little bit less bass than that laptop. I really appreciate having built-in speakers when I'm going to watch a video or a stream and I don't want to put on headphones. It's a really convenient feature to have in my opinion. And this monitor also has a webcam, which you don't want to use because it is garbage tier. It is 1440p and please just don't use this webcam. So with all that, what do you think? Is this a compelling enough package for $300? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I think for everything that this monitor delivers, the the Apple quality, the 1440p display, it's IPS, it has very nice colors, solid brightness, and it has some really nice speakers. All that, I think this is a really compelling package. If you found this video helpful or interesting, leave a like, and if you want to see more content like this, please leave a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.